devil. Our time is running short. The devil's time is running short. He knows it. He's working overtime. We should work all the harder to make sure we come out on top. Praise God. Lord, we got a job to do. Just to see souls saved. I want to see souls saved. Hallelujah. Whatever it costs. Praise God. Lord, let me have a word. Let me have a desire for souls. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sister Nancy, you got a song? Thank him for the grace that he gives us. I really praise the Lord. I really praise God. Um, I, um, well, let's just sing this song and then I'll, I, I'll break it and do a little testifying. Oh, hallelujah. Probably, I don't know. Ken's got his foot caught and 
And uh, he, uh, he just tore that teeny shoe just completely up. It was just all chewed up. And he had on a pair of, uh, uh, back then, polyester socks. <laughs> and uh, uh, he had on, he didn't even cut that polyester on socks. But it cut his foot. He cut, it did cut his foot. And it, it was in different places in different ways. And I, I went and, and whenever that, uh, uh, got those, those band-aids. You're, that you stitch with. Butterfly. Yeah, butterfly stitching. And I uh, got those things and I started to work on it. And, and uh, I stitched that, that foot back together with uh, those places back together on his foot. He never had infection. He never had anything. And he did hop around for a while. But I want you to know God moved him up. If, if, if we, whenever if we trust God, <laughs> all those years that we trusted God and everything to come along uh, I didn't have any desire to go out and do something else because I knew that if I wasn't living for God and li- doing the right thing whenever these seeds came along I might not do what I needed for God but I knew that if I if, if, and not just me I mean we all the whole family we knew to live for God and to live right and do the right thing and God was there to move me he's a wonderful wonderful wonder working God it's all right with my soul. It's all right, baby. me home. My King Jesus gave me peace. And it's all right. It's all right every day. It's all right all my way. My King Jesus gave me peace. Thank you. 
will think you're crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, folks in church will think you're crazy. We don't see enough of that stuff. And I'm not talking about being attacked by the devil, but seeing supernatural things happen. Yeah. And I'll be honest, I've got some testimonies I can tell. Well, where have they been in recent years? Yeah. Yeah. What are we allowing to happen to us, church? Hallelujah. Talk about how God moved and how he did things. Hallelujah. We probably all got testimony of things that God's done that just would blow your mind. Hallelujah. And we need to make sure it's all right with our soul. <coughs> Hallelujah. I want to see God move. What happened to confirming the word with signs following? Hallelujah. Now, I'm not talking about the Jews. I'm talking about Pentecost as a whole. That dark church as a whole. You're not seeing that much anymore. You go find out what's going on in the mission field and you hear all kinds of stories like that. But here, what's the matter with the U.S.? I'm going to tell you that we had prosperity to the point that we just kind of ruled the miracles out. Hallelujah. I want God moving. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, be great. God. Sister Mary Love, you want to testify? Amen. seen even that I prayed for somebody that God did a miracle. I've been preached too that it happens yeah, you know that we've got the power but then you, you pray for somebody and it actually happens. And, and it feels not ah, just coincidence. They wouldn't get over it anyways. No, I'm telling you we're serving to God. I remember that woman that Brother Henson and I we went and had that Bible study with Sister Carolyn was with her with us and we prayed for that woman she was paralyzed from the waist down and she got up and she started dancing and leaping and praising God she picked up her little dog and held it over his danced all over the house and that little boy's like I guess I don't get to drive anymore he got a hardship license at 12 years old I literally I was telling the chiropractor about that the other day Jason Whitaker there in Parsons I said you know you think after something like that, someone would go to church, but she would. Called her, invited her to come to church. I'm busy washing my car. I ain't got time. Hallelujah. Did God take it back? No. Hallelujah. I know people that were related to that lady. God healed her and it stayed that way. But I don't want to be in that, that position. And if God's got time for me, I want to have time for God. I don't have time for the devil, but I want to have time for God. He is so good to us. Praise God. <coughs> Sister Monica, you got a song? Praise God. Praise God. Sister Amanda, testify. Bless the Lord. God done anything for you? Bless the
situations for you and delivering you in certain things. And when God does it, you testify and give God glory for it because when the more you give God glory for what he does, the more God will do. It increases our faith that we may ask and receive. Praise God. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we're careful. Have you got something? Praise the Lord. Just glad to be here. Thank you guys for every opportunity we get to get up and be in this house. I was thinking back the other day Lord, about different things that had happened to me. One time I had broke my foot yeah. while I was working volleyball, and I was so scared because I did not want to go to the hospital. First thing that I thought of, I called Mom and Daddy. I told them, like, I broke my foot. I need y'all to pray for me. I didn't really know how bad it was, and I had kind of kind of walking on the side of my foot because I couldn't walk on my foot, so I was having to turn my foot sideways boss man come up and he's like, what happened? I told him, the boys that was in there, we knew it was inside a really big paint boot, and uh, it, everything in there echoed. If you tap something, it echoed. And when I stepped down off that stool, you could hear my foot just crack, crack. You could hear it. And the boy that was standing beside me, he heard crack. And I was like, 
just broke my foot, man. And I, I, I really, I always, it wasn't, it was hurting, but it wasn't, I wasn't crying, I wasn't trying not to act like it was hurting too bad. And I worked for another hour or two on it. General manager finally come by, he's like, you need to go to the hospital. I'm like, I ain't never been to the hospital. I ain't going to the hospital. I said, I ain't, I ain't got no way to pay for none of that. He's like, ain't worried. You go to the hospital. I'm like, all right. I called mom and dad, told him, I said, they're going to take me to the hospital. So they took me to the hospital, and when they done x-rays on it, they said, man, it's such a clean break. They said, there really ain't nothing we need to do about it. They said, you just put a boot on it, take it easy. It's like, it, it'll heal itself. And I got to thinking about it. Then. I was like, you know, I get this guy. I'm like, I didn't have to do not one thing for it. I didn't, I just took an x-ray and gave me proof that it was broke and sent me home. And I was just like, thank you, Lord. I was just thinking about it the other day. I'm like, so many times you don't really realize it in the middle of the situation. Really think that, but thinking back on different instances that's happened to me, I'm, I thank God for each and every instance. Yes. He's, so He's so good every time. I was listening to a message last night about Brother John James. He was talking about Joseph a little bit, but he was talking about how when his brothers had mistreated him and tortured him and, and, and done all those things to him, that when they come to him in Egypt, when they come up, and uh, they, they they were so scared when they found out that that was their brother that they thought was dead. But he told them, what well, you meant for evil, God meant for good. That's right. And we don't realize it right in the middle of when somebody's doing evil to us. But if you can just think, if you can just get in your mind what's God got planned. Yeah. When things is happening to you, it ain't for no reason. I was listening to somebody else. I can't remember who it was that was preaching the message. Maybe Brother Jeff Arnold or something. But, you know, there's, there's reasons why certain people don't go through troubles and trials. And there's reasons why other people do. Because sometimes God's got faith that you'll make it through it. As where others, they won't make it through it if they was put through that same test. They have to be put through something a little bit less tempting or less testful to, to get them built up slowly. But when you find yourself right in the middle of all these diverse temptations where the devil's trying to hit you at its hardest, it's because God has got a plan and he's going to work it to your good. And you might not see it right then. Joseph, he had a dream. He had two dreams. He was all excited, went and told his mom and dad, yeah, yeah. And they was like, you saying that me and your mother's going to bow down to you? You're crazy. But what happened? One day they did. Sometimes God gives you a dream, not so you can go a mouth off about it, but to let you know, to, to, to give you a piece of that promise that you've got something to hold on to. God gave me a promise that one day it's going to come true. Regardless of what goes on, there's been promises that's been told to me in my life, and this whole thing that's held me on, because I know God's got a plan in my life, and I don't want to give up before I see that plan fulfilled in my life, because the devil's, he's going to try to do it any way he can, and he'll use your brothers and your sisters in the heat of an argument, or in the heat of the moment, when really, you know, in five minutes, it'll fade away, nobody will even think nothing about it, but how are you going to react to it? Are you going to let it just get you down, and let it eat you, and let it tear you, or are you just going to allow God to use that to better you, and to help you, and strengthen you? each and every step you go through. I thank God for each and everything that he allows us to go through that will strengthen us and help us. I really don't know what song to sing. I don't know what song to sing. What song do I sing? Ah, is that one daddy was just talking about? Uh, the, the, the mama and daddy just got going on. I want to know how it feels. Yeah, that one. Sing a song. I don't even know what kids can do. My mama and daddy talking about going home Since I was just a babe on the knee They said that nothing compares to what was waiting up there I wonder day we would finally be free I've never seen it but I keep on believing It'll be a place like I've never known I keep my eyes on the sky
stuff in this life that when I was growing up, I thought I'd like to know how that feels. I'd like to know how to, if I could experience that. And there's a lot of places I would like to experience. But when I think about the things of God, when I begin to realize how many things of God that I haven't made it, made it my priority to find out about, to look into. The, the Lord spoke to me here just a few minutes ago before the Sister Nancy was talking about what are you looking for? And then Brother Jeremy got up and started talking about that. When you're going through life, you gotta you gotta look at look for things of God. You can, you really need to look for things of God. You need to look for good things. So I was thinking about how many times it talks about in the Bible about looking. In Mark, in, uh, in Luke chapter 6 and verse 10, it says, And looking around about them, about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored whole as the other. What was he looking around for? He wanted everybody else to be looking too. When you make, when you look around and you make eye contact with everybody, everybody engages. You don't think about things like that when you're in, in, in life sometimes. It's important for everybody to know when something good's going to happen. I think Jesus really wanted them all to see that this man's hand was fixing to be healed. So he looked around on all of them so they would all engage. And then you find in, in Luke chapter 9 and verse 16, then he took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed them and break and gave to the disciples that sat before the multitude. And why did he look up to heaven? He wanted everybody in the crowd to realize where that blessing came from. He didn't want the credit for all that. That's why he got so aggravated when they were following him after that just to see another great miracle. Because he didn't want them to think that he was the one that was doing all that. He wanted them to see it, but he wanted them to realize it was God that was doing those miracles. Now, Luke chapter 9 and verse 62, it's, And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. So there's a direction that we need to be looking. If we're going towards the kingdom, we don't need to be looking in the wrong direction. If we start working, we don't need to quit working. We don't need to be talking about quitting working. Me and my wife was talking on the way to church about how the children of Israel had the attitude of looking back whenever they were walking in the wilderness. They were getting all the blessings of God. Everything was provided for them that they needed. But they was looking back to them leeks and garlics and melons. And I said, I might have been tempted by the melons, but I don't think I'd have been looking back to Egypt for them. It's not time to be looking back, folks. We need to be looking towards the mark. And in John chapter 1, In verse 35, it says again, The next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he says, Behold the Lamb of God. He was looking at the Lamb of God. He wanted everybody to realize this is the one right here. So he was looking. He had been looking for the Lamb of God ever since he started preaching. That was the whole reason why God sent him to preach, was to declare the day of the Lord. So we got something to look forward to. But now we, we run into Peter. So they ran both together and the other disciples did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. And he stooped down and looking in saw the linen clothes lying. Yet went he not in. He was satisfied with what he's saying. He said he ain't there. But Peter, he ran on in there. He wanted to see what was going on. 
But we got to be satisfied with what we see sometimes. We got to believe it when we see it. That's right. And even even the woman when she went, she was looking around trying to find out where Jesus went. She asked, "Where did they take him?" And he had to show herself to him. And he said, "Look upon me. It is I." She had to look at him. And then you find in the council whenever they were, a lot of the times whenever, like the the one that was looking for the voice of the, of Jesus, whenever he was at the gate and he was waiting for a miracle and he was listening. And when he heard the voice of Jesus, he, he started calling out. So it's not just looking. Sometimes we've got to look to listen too. But I, the reason why I'm saying all this is because I really feel like the things of God, it's like, it's like, what are you looking for? So if you if you're looking for to see the things of God, then you're going to see them a lot more often. But if you're not looking for them, you're you're probably not going to see it that much. If you're scared of the devil, he's probably going to torment you. He's going to jump on your back. He's going to cause trouble. He's going to let you know he's there. But if you're not worried about him so much, then he's not going to mess with you as much. If you're looking for miracles, then you need to be searching. You need to be seeking for miracles. In the, in the New Testament, it says, seek you for the best gifts. Well, we got to be looking for those gifts. We need to desire to have those gifts. I really want to see what God's going to do in this last day and time, and I want to be a part of it. I believe we're going to be seeing a lot of things. I believe we've already seen some things that some people may not have noticed. But there's a change. There's a change in the atmosphere of this country. And there's a necessity for the things of God to be made manifest. And we need to be ready. We need to be willing. We need to be looking for the things of God. shall be opened unto you. We don't need to just look. We need to desire to see the things of God. Praise God. Does anybody else have something they want to do? A testimony? A song? Just Boy, I changed those the order. There, what you got? Mommy. Alright. Well, So sometimes less things like that happen so we can learn how to do better. Praise God. He's a good God. Somebody else won't testify. my turn now. Five verses. 
1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 11. My little subject tonight is pursuing the supernatural. Starting at verse 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all, not just for ourselves. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy to another the discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit divide into every man severally as he will. At the will of God. You can be seated. I'm not talking about pursuing the supernatural. So, several years back, I've seen a lot of churches kind of making a trend where they try to stay away from, you know, some of these supernatural events in the church, people speaking in tongues and giving out interpretation and, you know, the gifts of healing and different things that go on. And, and a lot of them said, well, there's so much wildfire around that I don't want to be confused with that. Well, I'll tell you what, I'd rather be confused with that than to have it gone all together. You know, if they're <coughs> preaching or trying to pray for people in the name of Jesus and a supernatural event happens, like Jesus, like Paul said, they can't likely speak evil of no, Jesus that said that. Hallelujah. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of the way people think about some things. We're so afraid that something is going to happen or we're going to be misassociated or associated with something, you know, different than what's the truth. Like the words, have you been born again? That's a lot of folks don't even want to say that because immediately you think of Baptist folks or Trinitarian folks, if I just put it that way. I believe. Well, I'm not afraid to use the term, have you been born again? Jesus did. And we have to be born again if we're going to make it. I don't want to shy away from the supernatural. I believe. What's ever happened to the word being confirmed with signs followed? There should be supernatural events happening in the church. <laughs> we should be able to call on the elders of the church, anointing them with oil, and pray in the prayer of faith, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And if they have any sin, it shall be forgiven. And I've mentioned that before as well. Sometimes events come upon us because of sin in our life. But God always does it in a way that we know where the problem is. God will show us. Amen. Hallelujah. I want wisdom. I want God to help me to know how to go in and come out among his people. Yeah. And he says he gives to all men liberally. And he upbraideth not. Right. Say, well, what's that upbraideth not mean? Have you ever asked a question and had people laugh at you and say, that's a stupid question? Well, what God's saying is that ain't going to happen. If you want wisdom, if you want to know about a situation, if you want to know how to do something, ask, and you'll receive. Hallelujah. There's a situation here with these nine spiritual gifts, and they should be working in the church. They were working in the book of Acts. I still hear about them working in the mission field. I don't hear that much about it in, in our churches today. We do hear about some stuff. There are some places where you hear miracles happening regularly. But what's happening to the church as a whole? There needs to be supernatural science following the word of God. Hallelujah. People see this, and I know we're not supposed to do like Jesus said when they said, show us a sign and we'll believe. No, that's not the purpose of what we're doing. But when the word goes forth and God backs up the word, you know it's confirmed. Hallelujah. Now, We've got to, we've got to know his voice. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big problem in the church nowadays, is knowing his voice. Hallelujah. In the book of John chapter 10 and verse 4, it says, And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yeah. 
and the stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know the voice or know not the voice of strangers. Yeah. Well, we need to know the voice of God. Yeah. Right. Really, do we know? Can I say honestly? Oh, I know the voice of God. Just, just like that, you know. Can I honestly say that? We need to. Hallelujah. We need to know the voice. If you skip down to John chapter 10 and skip down to verse 27, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I want to know his voice. You know, we have a generation that doesn't really know how to hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. God speaks to us. He says, my sheep know my voice. We read this story of Elijah fleeing from Jezebel. And he fled into the mouth of this cave. And while standing there in the entrance of that cave, he seen a strong wind come by and just tear the trees and the mountainside apart. He seen an earthquake. And he seen a raging fire. And all those things, he was looking for the voice of God and it wasn't there. That lets me know that sometimes God gets our attention or God directs us by things like that. But he said, it wasn't in that. It was a still, small voice. Do we know that voice when we hear it? Hallelujah. <clears throat> There's three voices you're going to deal with in your life. One is your own thoughts in your head. The other is God speaking to us. And the other is the devil trying to whisper in our ear and influence. And I remember when I first got in church and I prayed, Lord, help me to know the difference. You know, the devil can tell you to do something that sounds like it's good, and it's not. He used scripture on Jesus. Command these stones to be made bread. And Jesus combated what he said. So you've got to have a knowledge of the word for the Holy Ghost can bring those things to remembrance. You have to have a knowledge base. Brother Kevin mentioned this before, you know, teaching on it. You have to have a knowledge base before you can apply wisdom to that knowledge. Praise God. But he'll speak to us. And sometimes, you know, we say, well, God's showing me, and really it was my own desires, what I wanted to happen, what I wanted to do. Are we really listening to the voice of God? Can we eliminate the other voices and the distractions that come at us? And when God speaks, do we know his voice? It can be so. You exercise that in your life. You start looking for God's voice coming to you. You start experiencing that. You start exercising it. You start answering God. You know, a lot of times when we pray... Lord, I need, Lord, I need, Lord, I need, Lord, I need. Rarely any thank you, Lord, but sometimes there's some thank you, Lord. But how many times do we just stop and let God speak? A lot of times when you're praying, you know, if the people are listening to you and you're just sitting there not making no noise, well, they ain't praying, they don't go to sleep. But sometimes you can just stand still. And God starts talking to you. And you don't even realize he's talking to you until you start realizing you're praying and you're saying, God, what do I do about this situation? And then you're telling yourself, well, you, know, you think you're telling yourself, this is what needs to be done. Well, no. You know, it's like the man was praying and said, Lord, do you know what those people were saying about me? Why I need to? And then there's a little voice in the head that says, you know that's not right. You can't do that. Yeah, yeah, but... And you start arguing back and forth. Who do you think is talking back? We've got to exercise our ability to know the voice of God. Hallelujah. God speaks to us. But will we listen? God gave the children of Israel the promised land. I'm talking about they had the title deed. It's yours. Go collect it. And all through the wilderness, grumbling and complaining, griping. Hallelujah. Like some already said about them, always looking back towards Egypt. 
when God was providing all their needs. God was delivering them from their enemies. Oh, hallelujah. You know, a lot of us say, I'm standing on the promises of God. Really? Yeah, this book is full of promises. That's great. The promise was great. But you're not going to receive that promise until you're willing to pursue those promises. The promise is fine. You know, I've got a million dollars at my house for you right now, says Nancy, but it. You don't ever go get it. You ain't going to get it. you got to pursue the promises of God. It's not something that's just going to happen. They had a promise of this land of Canaan that God said was going to be theirs. All they had to do was go take it. And when they got there, they sent out spies and defeated their faith. Look, church, if God said it, believe it. Don't go looking for ways to follow. Well, I don't know if I can do this or not. If God said you can do it, you can do it. Hallelujah. In Judges chapter 2 and verse 1, listen to what's happening here. They made their way into the promised land. All right? They didn't just fall in their lap. They had to go in and take it. They had to take Canaan. But they stopped. In Judges chapter 2, reading down through verse 5, And the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bokin and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. It's yours. Tied a deed. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land, Ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Wherefore, I also said, I will not drive them out from before you. That was their job. But they shall be a th as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. And it came to pass, when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. And they called the name of that place Bokim. Or Bokim. Or Bochim, however you want to say it. And they sacrificed there unto the Lord. What's the problem? You know, God's promise was that, or God's problem was, why haven't you possessed the rest of the land? They moved in. It surely was a land flowing with milk and honey. They had all these vineyards and all these you know, crops and all those things that they needed. They had homes that they didn't have to build. They had everything they needed, and they just went in there and took their ease. Why haven't you possessed the rest of the land? Oh, God. How many of us here have something we need from God? We have a promise in the Word of God. Why haven't you possessed it? You have to pursue it if you want it. It's not just, Lord, you know, you promised in your word and, and, uh, and I'm standing on your promise. Well, you might have to do a little bit more than stand. You might have to move. Hallelujah. Does anybody know what the answer was? Why they didn't pursue, pursue the rest of the land? Why they didn't possess the rest of the land? You know what their answer was? We're tired of fighting. Now think about it, church. I pray one time, I don't get it, I'm tired of praying. I ain't just going to keep on. We know we need to pray, we know we need to fast. I'm tired of all this stuff. You know, sometimes it just gets to be so, you know, burdensome. Do we want the promise or not? We can't be tired of fighting. We can't be tired of fighting. we got to fight on, no matter what it takes. If you want to see supernatural events happening in your life, if you want to see God move for you, if you want to see God work out situations and healings and things like this, it's going to have to be pursued. 
you know, their attitude was, well, we'll just have a peaceful coexistence, you know. They're not that bad. I mean, they're not giving us any problems right now. God said, because of their attitude, God said, they shall be as thorns in your sides. It may be all right for now, but if you leave it that way, it's just going to get worse. We must pursue the promises of God. And when the angel came from Bokim, and he was questioning, why have you done this thing? There's much land yet to be possessed. Sure, God gave it to you, sir. But you still have to possess it. They just gave up on the promise of God. I'm tired of fighting. I don't want to mess with it. It's not worth it to me. Hallelujah. That's their attitude. Church, I don't want to develop that attitude. If not, we're not careful, we will. We still have to possess the promises if we want them. Hallelujah. We may have God's promises, but if you don't possess the promises, you're not going to get it. If you don't pursue these promises, you're not going to get it. section of our churches don't even reach for the supernatural anymore. People still go up to prayer. How often do we really see something supernatural? God, I don't know, we get prayed for prayer and God heals a headache and I got prayer and God did this and some other thing but, but you know, I got cancer I, 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 need to, I need to go to the doctor. in God, you're going to make it. Hallelujah. Supernatural doesn't just happen. We come to church, we have church service, you know, and we go home. We come to church, we have church service, and we go home. We go about our daily routine, we get up in the morning, maybe we say old prayer or whatever, read the Bible, go on to our job or whatever we're going to do that day, and we come back home, we go to bed, and and we go through our routine. Church, we fall into a rut if we're not careful. And we're not allowing ourselves to seek God, to pursue the promises of God. I believe, oh, you know, the supernatural doesn't just happen. God doesn't just show up and fix your problem. You know, you have to pursue things. If you don't pursue these things, they're not going to happen. You know, a lot of churches don't go after it. Oh, you know, we've heard some good preaching. You know, I, I felt a little tingle of the Spirit. We've had a good church. Is that what we're satisfied with? Is that all we want? And they don't even go after it. God has so much more, church. For each and every one of you sitting here tonight, God has so much more. And it's right there. All you got to do is pursue and possess. The promise is yours. You've got the title deed. Hallelujah. All we've got to do is claim it. Hallelujah. I don't want to just be satisfied with good church. You can never possess what you're not willing to pursue. And you will never pursue until you are fully persuaded. God has given us the promise. Well, what, what's the wrong, wrong with us being persuaded? What's wrong with us not pursuing? Is his track record bad? Has he let us down so many times that we just don't got no faith in him anymore? Hallelujah. The problem is we're not pursuing. And if we don't pursue... We won't possess. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. 
Did you catch that? If any man hear my voice and open the door, I hear something. Somebody knocking at the door. Yeah, I just don't feel like getting up and opening it. Do you know the voice of God? He knocks. Are you going to open? You've got to respond to the presence of God. I've said that before about church. When his presence comes into this church, if we don't respond to his presence, he is not going to minister to our needs. We have to pursue, pursue and possess. It won't happen unless you hear and open. Hallelujah. you got to pursue. Hallelujah. If you're not persuaded that the gifts of the Spirit and supernatural and the Operation of the power of God is for you. Don't worry. I can't say you're going to hell because you never had a mercy. I can't say you're going to hell because you never called on God to deliver you from the situation and you just went ahead and suffered through it. Don't worry if you don't think it's for you. Don't worry. It's not going to grab you and wrestle you to the ground and force you to take it. He's not going to force you. He's got it there. It's like the prodigal son's older brother. Well, how come you never, son, it's been yours all this time. There it is. All you had to do was get it. All you had to do was take it. It was yours already. You had the birthright. Hallelujah. You can just sit there if you want to in your own pitiful little state and do without because you must pursue in order to obtain. It's hard. I'm not, I'm not trying to be holy. I'm not trying to point a finger at anybody because I'm, I'm definitely looking at myself in the mirror while I'm preaching this church. I'm going to be honest. I'm trying to do more. I'm trying to seek God more. I've been trying to just, you know, I, I like to, like coming to church and have a prayer meeting on Mondays. I believe it will make a difference. I like trying to fast a little bit on Tuesday, even if it's just, you know, one meal. And if everybody don't want to do it on Tuesday, at least do a little bit of fasting through the week. You know, Lord, I'm doing this for you. Lord, I'm doing this because I want to draw closer to you. Lord, I want to be more sensitive to your voice. Help us to grow in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Caleb told Joshua, I'm 85. And you were there when Moses said, I could have that mountain. And I want my mountain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Caleb said, well, go take it. So what did he do? He believed the promises of God. He pursued his promise. He went. When everybody else was thinking, man, them giants, and, I, and I've told this before, when they were excavating those roads going through what's now known as Turkey in the mountains of what was then called the Nack, and they dug up several skeletons of giants, and the Smithsonian Institute came in there and took them all they could get and and hid them down in the basement of the Smithsonian Institute, the Creationist Museum in, in Texas managed to get one femur joint from here to the knee. And they had a man build a, draw out a skeleton using that femur, anatomically correct, and that man would have been somewhere between 14 and 16 foot tall. Those people were scared. Uh, God said it, but I ain't pursuing that. Caleb said, God said it, and I got faith in my God. If he'll be with me, I'm going to pursue it. Hallelujah. And he took that mountain. He defeated the Anakin. Hallelujah. Caleb took it. He pursued it. He obtained the promise, but he didn't just sit there waiting like everybody else. That mountain was the capital of the giants. Hallelujah. That was their stronghold. And these little bitty runts come in there. Said, I come to take it. <laughs> you dummy, I'll kick you off the battlefield like a football. Didn't work that way. God was with him. Hallelujah. Oh, it was all because Joshua trusted God for the impossible odds. That God showed him favor. 
His statement was, if the Lord be with me, I shall be able to cast them out. He didn't have to say if. God was with him. He had the promise. And he cast them out. That city, and this is interesting, church, that city was later called Hebron. You know what Hebron was? It was one of the cities of refuge. It became a city of refuge. And there's a message in that. Because if you're willing to pursue what God has promised, it can be a place of refuge for other people. Hallelujah. If you will pursue the promises of God, you can be the refuge for other people. You can be the promise of the results of there being a refuge for others. You can be the results of others saying, well, if God did it for her or God did it for him, he'll do it for me. He's not a respecter of persons. We need to lift ourselves up in faith and obtain the promises of God. Spiritual gifts are not meant just for you. But they're for edifying others. It's not just for me. 1 Corinthians 14 and 1. Apostle Paul speaking. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. I don't know if it's for me. We were told to desire spiritual gifts. The Holy Spirit gives it to anybody that's willing. Anybody that's willing to be used. Anybody that will ask. Hallelujah. I know people, Sister Bessie, you know, Stanford, that she's been used in each one of the nine spiritual gifts at different times. Some people say, well, you know, you can got one gift and that's it that's all you I don't believe that I've seen it happen different than that I've seen people that have never prayed for anybody before and seen a miracle happen and it happened I've seen people that you wouldn't think would have a certain type of wisdom and they had it but God gives to anybody see it's not it's not our ability it's our availability we've heard that too many times and we just let it go in one ear and out the other Lord here am I send me are you willing to say that are you willing to go what, through what it takes to obtain the promise of God, to obtain the desires of your heart? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, skipping down to verse 12. Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, we need to seek. Seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. It's not just for me. Oh, I'd like to be able to come up here just lay hands on and see God give them a miracle. That's going to come up right. there somebody. I'd love to see that, but it's not just for me. It's for the edifying of the church. It's for the lost to see that there's still a God that does the miraculous. There's still churches that have supernatural powers working in them. Hallelujah. If God confirms his word with signs and wonders, where are they? God confirms his word with signs and wonders, where are they, church? Hallelujah. If we're not seeing it operate in the church, what's the problem? I'm going to tell you what the problem is. We're not pursuing, pursuing in order to possess. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Lord, help us. Hallelujah. If we would, I'd like for us just to go ahead and gather around the front. I'm telling you, if you have a promise that you're standing on, if you want God to deliver, if you'll reach out to Him tonight, if you will pursue that promise tonight, God will get it. Hallelujah. It's not me, it's not in me, it's in God. God has promised. Caleb walked up to Joshua, said it's been a long time. I still want my mountain Well, I'm just as strong now as I was back then Back when I was gone in I still want my mountain
God. Are you willing to pursue it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, call for the elders of the church, anointing them with oil, praying the prayer of faith, and a prayer of faith so to save the sick. That doesn't just mean preachers. That means older saints of the church. So we're going to do something a little bit different here. Brother Don, Brother Vic, Sister Mary Love, Sister Nancy, I want you all to come up here. And we're going to have prayer. And we're going to keep singing this song.
dismissed. Uh, we can pray. Uh, be dismissed in Jesus' name. Lord, we love you, Jesus. And thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, you've seen prayer of faith going up, Lord. We pray one for another. Lord, and we're asking you to minister to these needs, Lord. Sometimes when we pray for others, Lord, when we get our healing, Lord, I'm asking you to minister to each one of our lives, Lord, as we go home. Help us to draw closer to you. 